Global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Stay tuned. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Global Happiness Today. 2023 elections is around the corner, but there is a snag that will shock a lot of Nigerians out there. Don't forget that uh, barely one week ago, there have been posters and series of pressure placed upon pres former president of Nigeria, Good Luck Abella Jonathan, to run for to vie for president to vie for presidency come 2023, when it looks like President Jonathan, by virtue of the law, discovered by um, prominent lawyers may not be able to do that by Nigerian constitution and they didn't stop there they made a lot of claims why President Abele Jonathan if eventually he runs uh, there may likely be some you know moves here and there that eventually should change the southern nigerians if they push too hard well before we go into the newspaper to find out the dynamics involved in this matter i like you subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button beside it you will see a bell notification icon please go ahead click on it to get notified as soon as you update our channel on youtube let's go straight into the news of the day if you insist that, um, according to the news, it's a constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, Fourth Authorization, Number 16, Acts 2017, Explanatory Memorandum. This act alters the provision of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, to disqualify a person who was sworn in as president or governor to complete the term of the elected president or governor from being elected to the same office for more than a single term. Mm. If you insist that good luck Jonathan can run for president because the fourth authorization act cannot be retrospective, please read the black letters of the authorization act again and read it together with the explanatory memorandum which is reproduced as follows. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, Fourth Authorization Number 16, Act 2017, Explanatory Memorandum. This act alters the provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, to disqualify a person who was sworn in as president or governor to complete the term of the elected president or governor from being elected to the same office for more than a single term. In reading the above explanatory memorandum, keep in mind that its, its wordings bear the best and only evidence of the legislative intent of the act and be guided to focus on the cospious use of the word was instead of is, which is also repeated in the pertinent provisions of the act to wit, which means a person who was sworn in to complete the term for which another person was elected as president shall not be elected to such office for more than a single term. Thus, in plain terms and without more, the plain language of the act disqualifies Jonathan because he was sworn in to complete Yeradua's term and was thereafter elected to the same office for a single term. In other words, having been elected, Jonathan shall not be elected as president for more than the single term he already enjoyed. That's the plain meaning and intent of the act. To be clear, the retrospective or retroactive reach of the act lies in the express use of the phrase was sworn in. If the National Assembly intended the act to be prospective, it would have been it would have instead resorted to using the phrase is sworn in. So, the repeated and emphatic use of the phrase was sworn in in both the act and its explanatory memorandum demonstrated a clear legislative and constitutional intent to make the act retrospective. The test is that applying that applying the act to Jonathan will appear that he is personally targeted is a moral question, not a legal question. Plus, one can argue that Jonathan is, as it were, the very mischief the act sets out to cure. That is, the mischief that lies in a Jonathan overshooting the eight years constitutional term limit if, by chance, he is elected to two terms after completing Yaradua's unexpired term. For avoidance of doubt, the retrospective tenor of the act received judicial approval 
in his recent case of Toyin versus PDP, where the Supreme Court held the Fourth Alteration Act to be retrospective, not prospective. In this case, in this very case, the Apex Court retrospectively applied the sister provisions of the Act to a 2015 pre-election matter, which was filed and pending long before the Act was enacted. In view of the foregoing, Jonathan's candidacy will be burdened by a holdover of nasty legal challenges that would definitely and significantly diminish his electability and mar his legacy. Now, let's look at this um, on the grounds that that particular uh, law of a memorandum and all that has been settled, that in as much as Jonathan, using him as a case study here, uh, where um, he... In two years, two years within the tenure of uh, the late uh, Yeradua, uh, he died. So by virtue of the constitution, he had to step in. So he did two years. And having seen that, if for any reason, Jonathan, of course, he made the second term, which was uh, the single term he had. Having seen that he was loved by all that, if he had won the second one, if you watch, that act was done in 2017 which means it was a case study of what is happening with Jonathan then as a case study. They had to look at it that if Jonathan had won the second tenor, it would have been a case of instead of eight years, we'll be looking at 10 years, which is an overshoot of what the usual two tenors are. We're looking at now two and a half tenor. And that may not have been like a norm eventually after all. So look, I was not elected. It was um, Gerard Dua, late Gerard Dua that was elected. I only completed the term. So with that as a clause, uh, it, so to speak, mars his uh, capacity. Now if eventually um, APC brings him in and for any reason, uh, former governor of... Um, former president of Nigeria, Gula Jonathan, eventually finds himself as the APC flag bearer, Invariably, if he wins the election, and there may be a lot of legal challenges here and there where they will begin to bring in this art and this this art that has already been put in place in perspective already, and which means the next available uh, person uh, who had the next um, highest score after him will automatically will have to be a president. So imagine, let's take for instance, that an um, APC fields in just calculating now, APC fields in a uh, Jonathan, and maybe PDP fields another person, maybe another now, and this whole matter comes into play. Remember, they have actually given the slot to a southerner who happened to be good luck about that Jonathan, and by virtue of this clause, he loses out. Now, the next um, highest um, uh, candidate would have to be the PDP person, who may probably in northern says they're not really looking at zoning anything to southern or southeastern region. Then we are back to the circle of giving it out to the northern race. Now the question now is, did they give it to Southerner? Yes. But of all the Southerners we would have to give, it will be someone who has, uh, so to speak, a legal clause to his eligibility. See, at the end of the day, we shoot ourselves in the leg one way or the other. So I think going forward, Nigerians need to, quote unquote, shine their eyes. When it comes to the issue of eligibility and elections. That's what we're going to wrap it up. Let's meet in our conversation. What's your take? Do have a nice day.